Good morning, everyone. This is Charlie Shrem from Crypto IQ, and here is today's Crypto and Coffee, where we got a few different topics to talk about. Just sit up, relax, grab your cup of coffee, and we'll chat about them. First thing, is, which, is, which is on everyone's mind, is the market this week. It's been crashing even more. But you know what? The way I look at it is you have your crypto holdings, you have your long-term hold. Don't forget, the people that did very well in the 2016 bull market where the price went from 1000 to 20000 these people didn't buy when the price was pumping. They bought when the price was dumping. Like myself, we bought when everything was crappy. We bought when there was blood on the streets. And we did very well when there was a bull market. I think it was Warren Buffett who said, buy when no one else is buying. Be fearful when other people are greedy and be greedy when other people are fearful. And that's what I think you should do. So just hold on and don't worry about the daily market stuff because as they say, if you watch every tick, you'll trade like a <laughs> On to the next subject, today's crypto adoption. Interestingly enough, um, there's a, uh, an Israeli authority, there's an Israeli government agency that asks if they can, their salaries can be paid in Bitcoin, which is very interesting because I think I said it in last week's Crypto and Coffee, adoption is not going to come from people going like evangelists and missionaries going in uh, and getting people to accept Bitcoin. And that's going to happen, but that's not where the real adoption is going to happen. The real adoption is going to happen when you have internal people working for companies or companies themselves, people who love crypto, Bitcoin, and they want to be either paid in it or they want to use it. And they put social pressure on their bosses and on their companies to adopt it and to use it. And that's where the real adoption is going to come. Instead of forcing people, make people understand why Bitcoin's important, right? Make sure people understand why this is such a big deal in today's world and make them fall in love with it. I love Bitcoin and there are reasons I love Bitcoin. So that's really important. Jimmy Song wrote a fantastical, a fantastic, sorry. Jimmy Song wrote a fantastic article called The Truth About Smart Contracts. Uh, it's a fantastic article. We're going to link it here. I highly recommend everyone check it out. What it talks about is not what is a smart contract, and that's not difficult to understand. It's basically a contract that enforces itself. For example, you can have a smart contract that says, I'm going to pay an insurance rate, and if my flight gets delayed, the insurance contract will automatically pay me out. Smart contract, contract that is smart. But what he talks about is that lawyers go to school for four, five, six, seven, eight years to learn how to write even a non-smart contract, how to write a basic contract. Yet smart contracts are being written by developers who all they have to do is learn some programming. Now, it sounds great, but what he's saying is we should take a step back and understand why smart contracts are important and why we should actually be using them for actual contractual obligations and having legal involved. It's an interesting point because usually when you're looking for a smart contract writer, you don't call a lawyer, you call a developer. I'm going to call a blockchain developer to write my smart contract. Well, what he's saying is not only should you consult a developer, but you should also consult a legal expert. Very interesting. Good job from, from Jimmy. Another topic we could talk about today is crypto and the environment. I've talked about this so many times and I get so frustrated when people talk about how Bitcoin and mining is like not environmentally safe and not good for the environment. That's a load of shit. I'm sorry. Because what's happening is Bitcoin companies and miners are the ones that are furthering cheaper, faster, and more efficient electricity. Think about it for a second. All these hydropower dams and all these uh, new electricity locations in, in China and where they, where they come up with better uh, and more efficient ways to generate electricity, the money to fund that research and development is coming from Bitcoin companies and Bitcoin miners. Up until now, we use oil, we use gas, we use, some people even use coal. It's dirty, it's not efficient, it's bad for the environment. Why aren't we all using solar power? Why aren't we all using hydroelectricity, water? The reason is, is because there's no economic incentive to do so. Meaning that these companies who are selling us the oil, why would they want to have a cheaper version of electricity when they're making so much money with what we have now? In comes Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin miners need cheaper, faster, and more efficient power and electricity. 
So what they do is they fund the development and they're actually building hydropower locations all over China right now. You're seeing now that there's a, a Bitcoin mining company actually building a whole new dam and repairing a dam. And then the, that electricity is being not only used for Bitcoin mining, but also to all the local villages at a very, very cheap rate. It's very interesting. You got to take it from that environmental perspective. It's, it's, it's a whole different world. And I think that when there's an economic incentive to do something better, the world can become a better place. Um, listen, guys, there's something called a $5 wrench attack. We protect our Bitcoin and our Ether and all our cryptocurrencies in Trezors and Ledgers and wallets on our phone. It's okay to have a little bit on your phone with you, but you should never walk around and keep in your house large amounts of cryptocurrency because as much as you secure it with 15 passwords, you have the $5 wrench attack. What that means is someone could go into a hardware store and for five bucks buy a wrench and hit you on the head with it and say, give me all your Bitcoins. It's not an unsophisticated attack there. So if someone's pointing a gun to your head, you're going to give them your Bitcoin. And this happened in New York this week. Three men actually part of a motorcycle gang, robbed a gentleman of $2 million worth of his ether. They brought him in, they kidnapped him, took him in the back of his van, and put a gun to his head and said, give us all your ether. And they made him drive to his house. Luckily, the authorities in New York actually apprehended those guys and arrested them. And I think, actually, I'm pretty sure almost all of the ether was returned. My point is, there are de various different companies like Coinbase Vault and different companies where you can keep your Bitcoin and your Ether and your Litecoin long term. Time locked safes where like what Steam does, if you try to withdraw your Steam, there's a three day delay. Things like that that protect you. Uh, there are a lot of different ways and we have a report incoming on the best ways to secure your cryptocurrency. Anyways guys, my name is Charlie Schramm. This is your morning's crypto and coffee. I hope you had a great time and I'll see you next week.